Medical Property Trust is a very controversial healthcare REIT. Most estimates range the fair value somewhere between $10 and $20 a share, and the stock trades at around $5, just a little bit better than $5 a share. Should you buy, sell, or hold this healthcare REIT? Hello, everybody. This is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGrass, the fundamentals analyzer software tool. You know, I've been coaxed and coerced and conjoled into doing an update on Medical Properties Trust. I want to talk a little bit about this stock. First of all, it's a specialty stock. It's meant to be utilized in conjunction with a well-diversified portfolio in order to produce income or to give, you know, I call it turbocharge the income of a portfolio because of its high yield. Now, the company did cut its dividend and the stock price has fallen dramatically and people are all fretting. But I'm going to talk about Medical Properties Trust today and give you a brief update into what I see currently and what I'm doing with the holdings that I have. For starters, I'm going to utilize the fast graphs here and we're looking at operating cash flow or better known in the REIT industry as funds from operations. So this orange line represents funds from operations. Funds from operations, there's not a lot of growth in this stock. It's averaged about 3%. You can see it had periods where FFO has risen and then fallen and then risen, and now we're in a little period of it falling again. So this would be a normal priced FFO of 15, which I would assess as a reasonable fair value. That would place the stock at about a $23 fair value if it traded at 15 times FFO. The historical normal price to FFO that the market has applied has been lower than that at around 12.22. That would put the stock's fair value at approximately 1886. You can buy the stock at $5.23 yesterday. It's up a little bit more today. The blended price to FFO is 324. You know, that's a fourth of what it normally trades at almost. Okay, the dividend yield is 11.47%. All right, now I want you to note that I'm purposely not putting price on the, on the chart at this point in time. What I'm saying is I'm looking strictly at the fundamentals of the business. Now, FFO is expected to be $1.54 this year and $1.48 next year, okay, which are you know lower, but those are still relatively high. That would be the second and third or fourth largest FFO values that the company has had, but it is in a bit of a downturn. All right. Now, here's the point. I'm going to go ahead and bring weekly stock prices on the graph. And I want you to note a couple of things. I want to go past the current situation here or scroll back past the current situation. I want to look at what, what has been normal. Well, first of all, during the Great Recession, we did see the price to FFO get down to, you know, 322, which is approximately what it's trading at now. All right. So, you know, that's the price to FFO got down actually to 272 lower than what is trading at now. And the price at that point was $3.04. That was in March 6th of 2009. If I go to as close as I can get March 5th of 2010, one year later, the stock was up 248% trading at a price to FFO of 13.79 or higher than its norm. Okay, that was a 276% annualized rate of return occurred in one year. So this is not the first time that this stock has had trouble. But what I also really want you to note is looking at the 12 FFO as a valuation reference line, the stock has traded at that 12.22, in this case 12.63, price to FFO, most of the time, and the rare times when it got below that, it recovered. And the rare times when it got above that, it also recovered and came back into the fair value transaction. So historically, the market has been happy to price it at around a 12 multiple instead of the 15 multiple I think it should have. Now we come fast forward to today. Okay, the stock has fallen dramatically from, you know, when it was trading at its normal price to FFO, it was trading at around $21 a share. It's fallen all the way down to $5 a share, okay, $5.23 a share. If it moved back to its normal price to FFO, let's say in the next year, like it did during the Great Recession that I showed you before, like it did during this period of time, if it were to do that in the next year, then we would be looking at the price going to $18 a share, and that would be a 188% rate of return you could get if you bought the stock today with an 11.47% dividend yield. 
Now, I don't see any reason to believe currently, as long as this orange line continues to hold up, why the stock would not do that. Now, maybe it won't do it in a year. Maybe it'll do it in two years. But I want to make a point. How much money did I lose on MPW? Okay, I bought it. My average cost when I originally purchased it was around 10. It's now trading at 5. That's half the value. But how much did I lose? And my answer is zero. I didn't lose anything because it's an unrealized loss. I have not sold it. When I bought the stock, I did not intend to sell it for years and years and years. I still don't intend to sell it for years and years. What I've been doing is buying the stock down, and I've now lowered my cost basis to around six. Okay, and I've also recovered and replaced a lot of the income that I lost when the company cut their dividend. And they did that to shore up the balance sheet and kind of, you know, get themselves in better shape. Now, the stock has continued to crater and people have freaked out about that. But the fundamentals have not. The stock price has fallen significantly overreacting to what I would consider to be modest financial losses. Now, you know, the company is going through some stress. It's happened to them in the past. I believe that the hospitals are still going to be in business four or five or six years from now. I believe Medical Properties Trust is still going to be managing hospitals four or five or six years from now. I think they're going to continue to pay their dividend. And I think, you know, getting it at 11.47% yield now would make sense. Now, if I look at what others are saying, it's not my, only my opinion. And of course, I'm, I'm going to tell you before I show you this, the opinions are all over the place. Let's look at Yahoo. And let's look at the fair value analysis that Yahoo provides. They put fair value at $20.48. That's reasonably consistent with what, you know, I showed you on fast graphs. Argus, they give it a buy rating, and they talk about the fair value being somewhere around 8 or $9 a share. Okay, if I go into Zach's, Zach's price target, the high price target is 15. The low price target is 982. This would represent almost a double. This would be almost three times what the current price is. And the lowest price target is only seven, okay, which that would still be a significant profit from, you know, these levels. So, you know, if I look at NASDAQ, NASDAQ analysts have it at 863 as a target price. Now, the issue with this is these target prices are different for each company. For example, if I go to Morningstar, they give it a fair value of 9.8. All right. Now, I don't know how they come up with that, but my point is the stock has fallen. The only thing that's really, really changed significantly has been the stock price. There's been a modest drop in the fundamentals. Now, you know, I believe anyone who sells this stock today is going to regret it three to five years from now. But again, it's relatively high risk. It's only double B rated. It's not, you know, a triple A rated Johnson & Johnson. It's a real estate investment trust in the healthcare sector, which are essential properties. I like this company long term. I'm pretty, you know, distressed like everybody else short term. But I don't believe in ever selling anything for less than it's worth. If you had just had an appraisal of your house and they appraised it, let's just use a, a metaphor of $500,000, and I walked up to you and offered you $250,000, you would laugh at me. You would tell me, you know, get out of here. My house is worth at least twice that much. Okay, and my point is the reason you would do that is because you would have a very strong sense of what the value of your house is, and you wouldn't let anyone take advantage of you. I have a very strong sense of what the value of Medical Properties Trust is, and I'm content to hold it. I'm collecting the dividend. I've lowered my cost basis by averaging the stock down. I only have a $6 cost basis roughly right now in the stock in some accounts. I only, it only has to go up a little bit more than it already has you know, in the last couple of days. So I'm happy to hold this stock for the next three to five years. But I am going to say this. If the fundamentals deteriorate from here, I will change my mind. But until they do, I'm not going to change my mind. So for all of you who are all stressed out and think you've lost all the money, if you sold the stock, I believe it's your fault. You know, you should have been greedy when others were fearful, as Warren Buffett said, in my opinion. I have become greedy when others are fearful, and I'm adding to the position. But I only use this stock sparingly. This is not a stock that I bought for capital appreciation. I let the other stocks in the portfolios give me the capital appreciation. This stock was bought strictly to provide a higher level of income that you could get from the traditional stock. And even after the dividend cut, the stock still does that. 
Anyway, this has been Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGrass, the Fundamentals Analyzer Software Tool, a.k.a. Mr. Valuation, bringing you an update as you've asked for in Medical Properties Trust. I am content to hold this stock for years to come. Your decisions have to be your own. If you like this video, give me a like, subscribe to the channel, and subscribe to FastGrass because it will help you from making irrational or panicky decisions by looking at fundamentals first rather than stock price. Thanks for watching.